Okay, so this video is looking at rate of reaction and how we can um, express rate of reaction in a rate equation. So when we talk about rate of reaction, we're talking about the change in concentration over time. So if you look at this graph here, this would represent how a product is being produced from the reaction. And as the time goes on, the concentration of the product increases. Okay, until eventually it levels off until it gets a constant concentration, no more is being produced. These lines here are gradients. And the gradient represents the, the um, change in concentration, which you do dy divided by dx, which is time. Okay, so we've got here, you can see the gradient represents a rate of reaction, and it's got a different steepness in different places. So here, this is the initial rate. So at t equals zero, we've got a gradient, and that will give us the initial rate of reaction. And we can compare these initial re rates of reactions to see if the concentration changes the initial rate. We look at initial rate in particular because we always know the concentration of the reactants at t equals zero. But as the reaction goes on, the concentration of the reactants change, so it's difficult to know how, what effect they have. Okay? Now a rate equation looks at how the reactants affect the rates, and we can see if they all affect it equally. So we, do a, we can do an experiment like this, Get the initial rate, and we use those initial rates. So if we look at this data here, here's an experiment with uh, nitrogen monoxide reacting, reacting with oxygen. Now here, if you notice, I've not even put in the actual equation. You can't work out the rate equation from the normal equation. You have to do it by experiment. So someone here has done four experiments, and they've changed the concentration. You see of NO, NO2, and they've measured the rate in moles per dm cubed per second. Okay, concentration over time. So what we want to work out for NO and O2, the two reactants, is their order, the individual order. That's the power to which the concentration is raised in the rate equation. And basically, the higher their order, the um, more of, the greater the effect they have on the rate of reaction. And if we added up those orders of the two um, reactants, we get the overall order of the reaction. So we want to work out the, from this, we want to work out the rate equation, um, find the value for K, find the units for K, and find the question mark here. So, what do we do then? Well, first of all then, if you want to work out the um, order for NO, you can see that um, from experiment 1 and 3, uh, experiment 1 and 3, the concentration of NO has doubled, and the concentration of O2 has stayed the same. So it's important that when I look at one particular concentration, the other concentration stays the same, otherwise we don't know which ones have an effect on the rate. So I wouldn't look at 1 and 2 because O2 concentration has changed as well. But 1 and 3, experiment 1 and 3, I can see that it's gone from 1 to 2, so it's been times by 2, and the rate has gone from 7 to 56, that's, so that's been times by 8. And you think of it, 2 from here to the power of something, that's right, to, to power of something equals 8, okay, from what, how the, the factor by which the rate has changed. So 2 to the power of 3 equals 8, so it's the uh, order for the concentration of NO in this rate equation will be 3. If we look at O2 now, we want NO to stay the same, so that would be experiments 2 and 3. You see O2 has doubled. Okay, The concentration of O2 has doubled, in times by 2. The rate, if we look at experiment 2 and 3, it's gone from 28 to 56, so it's also doubled. So 2 to the power of something equals 2, where it's 1, so it's order 1. So we put that in the rate equation then, the rate will equal k times the concentration of O2 to the power of 1, because it's order 1, times by NO to the power of 3, because it's order 3. So we use k, because to make it equal to the rate, we need to make it, we don't want it to just be proportional, we've got a proportionality constant here, that's what we call the rate constant. So the rate actually equals this here. Okay. Now we want to find what k is. So we can rearrange this equation to find k. Also, we should also, I should also say the overall order of this reaction will be 3 plus 1, because order 3 plus an order 1, so altogether it's an order 4 reaction. Right, so if I want to find k, I rearrange the equation. And you can see here, um, take, this, take the right equation, rearrange it to find k. So I've divided by 2 and divided by NO to power 3, it gives me that. And then these figures here, I've just taken from one, the first line, in fact. It doesn't matter which line you choose, as long as you keep the same line. So 1, 2, and 3, 7, sorry. And I've just substituted them into the places that are here. 
So rate was seven, two, one, one to the power of three, and work that through, seven over two, which gives you three and a half. We need some units as well for K. So the units that we have at the top here, again, I substitute into the equation. So I've got here the rate, which was moles per dmq per second, then the concentration of O2, and then the concentration of NO to the power of three, because it's, it was third order. That cancels out there. Okay. Anything on the bottom part of the fraction here is the power of minus one. So if I, multiply, if I see that through there, that brings that to the top. If I put this to them uh, here, on to the power of three, it's the power of minus three, and then it's all on the same line rather than being the bottom part of the fraction. Okay, because one over x equals x to the minus one. And then I multiply out. So remember, this is a unit here, moles as well, so it's the power one. So one times minus three, we multiply the minus three. Minus three times minus three is nine. So that's my units for k in this particular case. Each time you do uh, a rate equation, you have to work out the units of k because it can be different for different reactions.